Now there are two sorts of hypertension. That is 99% of all of you, of all patients that are hypertensive, have a thing called primary hypertension. Or as we call it in the United Kingdom, essential hypertension. This is a euphemism to describe the fact that we do not know what's causing it. So we call it essential. But essentially, we do not know the cause. A very small percentage of people, and I exaggerate here, but let's just call it 1%. 1% of patients that are hypertensive have a cause for their hypertension. And as you can imagine, a great deal of money and effort is spent on that cause. Because if you can find the cause and do something about it, you can stop that patient from being hypertensive. So what kind of causes might there be? Well, the first thing is that they may have renal disease, kidney disease, so that chronic diffuse renal disease, chronic glomerular nephritis, chronic pyelonephritis are all associated with hypertension because you know in the kidneys there are hormones, namely angiotensin and aldosterone, which come into play when there is a drop in the perfusion pressure in the renal system because of disease. And they retain sodium to compensate for this, and they cause spasm of blood vessels, so that the angiotensin, aldosterone mechanism, comes into play with anyone with chronic diffuse renal disease or with kidney disease as a compensatory mechanism. But in order to compensate, the blood pressure goes up and up. So if you have a patient that is hypertensive, you may say to yourself, maybe my patient has renal disease, chronic diffuse renal disease. The second thing you might think about, and the second cause of patients that do have a cause for their hypertension, is an endocrine disease, an endocrine lesion. And there are two important endocrine diseases that are complicated by hypertension. Both of them concern the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands, if you recall, are those things which sit on top of the kidney and are divided into the medulla and that of the cortex. They have an entirely separate origin, an entirely separate function. A tumor of the adrenal medulla is called the pheo Chromocytoma is a tumor of the adrenal medulla which secretes adrenaline and noradrenaline. And that puts your blood pressure up by causing spasm of blood vessels. And patients with a fear chromocytoma, with this disease, complain of attacks in which they get palpitations and severe headaches. If you were lucky enough, and took the blood pressure during an attack, you will notice that the blood pressure is high. And diastolic blood pressures of 120 and more, and systolic blood pressures of 200 and more, are compatible and consistent with a pheochromocytoma during an attack. But outside of an attack, So you would think of a pheochromocytoma in any patient with hypertension because sometimes that hypertension becomes sustained and the relationship to the attacks disappears. The second sort of an endocrine lesion complicated by hypertension is called Cushing syndrome where there is hypertrophy of the cortex of the adrenal glands. Again, with sodium retention because of excess cortisol. And that puts your blood pressure up and up. And the third 
main cause of patients that do have a cause, an actual cause for their hypertension is a congenital cardiac disease. That is six to eight kids per thousand born in the United Kingdom are born with some sort of a congenital cardiac vision. In the majority of cases, this is of a minor importance. Not like this one. This is called coartation of the aorta. The kids are born with an actual narrowing in the aorta. So the blood pressure has to increase, rise to get the blood above the narrowing, to get the blood to the peripheral parts, to get the blood to the lower parts of the body. And so the blood pressure goes up and up. And that is called coartation of the aorta, and it's a congenital cardiac lesion. So there are three very important causes of patients that do have an actual cause for their hypertension. Renal disease, endocrine disease, and congenital cardiac disease. Mostly and mainly they do not have a cause. But you should always look for a cause, because if you can find a cause and do something about it, you can stop that patient from being hypertensive. Now, there is just one other type of hypertension. That is whatever the cause of hypertension. And whoever may suffer from it, you can cut off, separate, put aside, whatever you like to call it, a group of people or patients in which the hypertension is extremely bad. We have a name for that. We call it malignant hypertension. So someone with essential hypertension may have malignant hypertension. Someone with a pheochromocytoma may have malignant hypertension. Some patients with chronic diffuse renal disease may have malignant hypertension. Any patient with Cushion syndrome may go on to develop malignant hypertension. Whoever develops it, and for whatever reason they develop it, this is an extremely serious state of affairs. Because in malignant hypertension, there is not just an increase in the spasm, of these blood vessels, but they actually become injured and damaged and occluded. And the end result is widespread tissue damage due to ischemia. And patients with malignant hypertension, if left untreated, die of renal failure because of kidney disease because all the arterials in the glomeruli are damaged and injured and occluded. Now there's a sign for malignant hypertension that is extremely important. Obviously the blood pressure would be high and indeed the blood pressure is high and diastolic blood pressures of 120 and more and systolic blood pressures of 210 and more are compatible and consistent with malignant hypertension. But that is not what defines it to be malignant. What defines it to be malignant is that if you were to look with an ophthalmoscope in the back of the eye, you will notice that there is swelling of the optic nerve disc, a condition we call papillodema. A swelling of the optic nerve head, if you like, the second cranial nerve, because the pressure inside the brain is increased. There is a raised intracranial pressure. And as well as papillodema, you often see exudate and hemorrhages in the background of the eye because of the damage to small blood vessels I've already talked to you about. So you diagnose malignant hypertension, not so much with a sphygmomanometer, but with an ophthalmoscope. 